Hi guys, Matt Easton here. So I had a bit of an exchange with uh, Ilka Hartkinen on um, the HEMA Alliance uh, kind of Facebook page. Um, and also I've watched his video, uh, where, which I'll link to below my video here, where he is talking about the uh, Red Dra Dragon um, sparring gloves that came out about uh, about three months ago or two months ago maybe. Um, and, you know, improvements that he would suggest to them. Now essentially, I, I kind of agree with uh, Ilka. Um, the particular aspect that he doesn't like seems to be the um, wrist protection and the cuff. And I essentially agree with that. And in fact, it was pretty much one of my first bits of feedback to uh, the HEMA shop guys, the guys that make these Red Dragon gloves, or have developed them, should we say. Um, uh, pretty much one of the first things I said was regarding the cuff, okay? So let's be honest about it, I'll just put this sword down for a minute. The, um, the cuff is a copy of uh, a lacrosse glove, okay? So it's not like they invented this cuff. This cuff is just simply a copy of the types of cuffs you see on things like the Brian Supercross uh, lacrosse gloves, okay? Um, now, first of all, to kind of um, to kind of not apologise for it, but to explain the context, their priority, of course, was to get a HEMA usable glove out affordably, it costs about £50 in the UK, um, to get it out as quickly as possible so that people had something better. Because let's face it, a lot of people were using even the nylon um, sparring swords that they produce uh, and getting broken fingers okay? and it was happening more and more uh, and so there needed to be a glove that was affordable and widely available and so on and so forth. Okay, So they did that. Good. This is and should be thought of, as I understand it from talking to the HEMA shop guys, this should be thought of as a generation one. Okay, So let's not be too harsh on them. They got this product out and this was a generation one and I happen to know what I'm wearing on my hand here is already slightly different to what they're producing now, okay? So it's evolved. The materials inside here have changed slightly. They're harder and a little bit more compressed. What I've got here is actually kind of like a pre-production one, okay? So that's the, that's the first thing. Now actually having a look at what, how I would uh, change this glove. Now first up I'll say, and again I'll mention I'll, uh, Ilka's video will be linked below mine here, so you can have a look at his video before you have a look at mine maybe to set the context. I would say, generally speaking I agree with most of uh, Ilka's comments, maybe some of the details I'd have a little bit different to what he said, um, but I agree with the general sentiment of it. Um, but uh, I essentially think that the main thing we need to look at here are the uh, two basic things are the cuff, which agrees with what he said, and the sides of the index finger and the little finger, which basically agrees with what he said as well. We'll just mention at the beginning here that you should wear the Spez fingertip protectors uh, inside these gloves if you're worried about getting hit on the end of your fingertips. Okay. Um, they come as an extra, they don't come you know, with the glove, you have to buy them separately, but they work really, really well, and essentially they work well enough that I don't think we need to really think about necessarily changing anything about the glove fingertips, because I think the Spez fingertip protectors already do that. You could maybe argue that maybe they should already have something built in, but yeah, we could. That, that's a negotiable <laughs> detail, but I think the cuff and the edges of the index and the little finger are more critical. Okay. Um, now, before I go on to how I would personally change the cuff and how I would change the edges of, of the fingers, uh, I mentioned one other point that Ilka picks up on, and that is he describes the padding getting in the way here when you're holding a sword which has a cross guard. Now, I could hold it in a hammer fist. Um, actually, um, I actually find in a hammer fist it doesn't really get in the way that much. Sticking my finger over the guard, so fingering the uh, ricasso as it were, I can kind of see what he's talking about. It brings the hand higher up into the into the hilt and you do get a greater pressure between that rear quillon and the padding on the top there. Uh, that kind of gets in the way. Actually, um, I'm not 100% clear on what Ilka's suggestion is about that. I don't think it should be got rid of because for people holding different types of weapon you definitely need something there protecting that uh, edge of your hand essentially. It's um, If I just pull the glove off for a, for a second, what it's actually protecting is the bone which comes from your index finger 
up here. That's a really important bone and you don't want to be getting it broken. Okay, so I do think that um, I do think there needs to be padding there, but maybe what needs to be looked at is the shape of the sort of plates as they were. They're actually semi-hard um, plates but maybe the the shape of them needs, needs to be changed slightly such that the cross guard of a cross hilted sword like an arming sword or a spider de lato um, a side sword can actually kind of fit in there a bit more conveniently so I think yeah definitely and that seems like something that could be done relatively easily without changing too much of the design um, I would also mention that the consistency of what's in these plates is pretty good um, Although I do think certainly for the back of the hand and probably for those plates that I was just referring to as well, you don't need so much bulk, uh, you don't need so much padding in there. I actually think a harder, a, a more rigid plastic plate, much like you have on the knuckles, yeah, because that works really, really well. Essentially having that there and there might solve a lot of the problems because you'll get rid of a lot of the bulk and potentially some of the weight as well. Although they're pretty light gloves, you'd make them even lighter, which would be a good thing. I think that rigid, hard impact plastic there and there, because you don't really need any flex up here. Okay, so that's maybe something else to think about. Um, now, looking at the main points, the uh, the edges of the fingers, I essentially agree with Ilka, okay? So we've got some padding here, and I should mention the first generation of this design didn't have these here, and basically they responded pretty quickly to uh, user feedback and added on these uh, plates here. But I think that essentially this design here needs to be looked at, particularly on the little finger, but also uh, on the edge of the index finger as well. So you can see it nicely on the camera there because it's highlighted in grey gray suede at top and bottom. And definitely that needs to be more substantial because where a lot of breaks happen, whether it's um, sabre or side sword or long sword or whatever type of sword you're using, a lot of breaks happen as a result of impact right at the edge of either the little finger or the index finger. Okay, so it's very, very important to protect those well. Okay, um, coming to the cuff, uh, Ilka's suggestion is a really good one and I basically sort of agree with it. So what he did is he took the cuff and um, wrist joint off a Polish sparring glove um, and mounted it onto the front part of of one of these red dragon gloves. Um, that's really cool. The only thing I would say is I don't think the cuff needs to be as long as the sparring glove because most people like to use uh, sort of independent forearm protectors and you don't want to end up with layers and layers and layers and I think the good thing about a short cuff is it's going to leave more wrist mobility um, and a long cuff is more likely to conflict with whatever you're wearing on your arms so I actually find the cuffs on the Polish sparring gloves a little bit too long to be honest I'd rather see something shorter. As regards to the wrist um, the Polish sparring glove solution is a really really good one but I think it might be quite hard to get it to work correctly with people of different sizes because bear in mind unlike the Polish sparring glove which is essentially a bespoke item it's made to fit individuals. Um, these red dragon gloves are made to be off the shelf so they're made in fixed sizes so they need to be able to fit a range of people and I think one of the problems with the um, Polish sparring glove wrist is it's a little bit too complicated for mass production that's the first thing and secondly I think you're going to have problems with the sizes uh, on, on different people. Now I might be wrong and if I am wrong that's great um, I'm quite happy to be wrong in this case um, but that would be my concern and the main one actually is that it's maybe a bit too complicated to mass produce and keep affordable and it, of course it's really important to remember these gloves are affordable and it's important to keep them affordable because therefore you're going to get more people wearing them and more people having their hands safe okay if you go up to the hundred pound or above um, price bracket then a lot of people aren't going to be able to afford them or just simply aren't going to be willing to spend that much money and they're not going to buy them and they're going to get more people with broken hands so it's very important to have a glove that fits this price bracket so what I would actually suggest is something more similar to and I know um, Chris Holtzman for example has suggested a similar thing is something more similar to the Victorian uh, sabre and bayonet gloves which actually have a stiff cuff, although again I would have a shorter cuff than they had because we 
we've got other stuff that we can use in conjunction and we've got a bigger variety of weapons that we use so I think it's better to have a glove that can function independently of a forearm protector so you can elect to use it or not dependent on what kind of jacket and what kind of weapons you're using um, so I'd have a short stiff cuff uh, that doesn't need to have any flex in it whatsoever um, and I actually think around the wrist what we need is some, something like the Victorian sparring glove which was actually very often a padded, either a padded ring like a donut around the wrist and that achieves a similar thing to this but it looks better and it gives better mobility and I would argue it gives better protection as well um, and uh, either a padded ring donut or a hard rubber um, kind of ring donut. Um, now I think the padded one's probably better because it can sit closer to the wrist and you can squeeze your hand through and it will still fit on everybody's hands um, but can still sit closer into the wrist joint whereas a harder harder uh, sort of plastic or rubber ring which was often used for single stick players incidentally um, traditionally um, the problem with that, of course, is the sizing, and people with big hands might find that they, you know, so you have to have a very big ring, therefore, so you can fit all the hands through it, so you get issues like that, which incidentally is a similar problem to what you have with the Polish sparring glove, because it's a very rigid thing. It has to be big enough for people with big hands to fit through, so we get into the whole mass production versus being able to fit on people's hands problem. Okay, um, so there we go. I would suggest that there's various different options we could look at for the wrist. I don't disagree with Ilka's uh, suggestion, but I'm not sure whether it'd be economical. I think something, a simpler version of it, uh, might be possible, might be preferable. I agree that this is not very nice and it looks rubbish, and just on top of what Ilka mentioned about it, I would add that uh, one of the problems I've had, I've seen many times actually in, in my club, is blades often go underneath it and get stuck. Uh, so if you thrust someone and they get their parry um, slightly wrong and they miss the thing, the blade will go through there. Now that's kind of amusing, it's not necessarily a terrible thing, but potentially you could have a problem of a blade uh, snapping because it's got stuck through someone's glove, which is not a good thing. Okay, and I totally agree with Ilka that having these three flaps at the back is completely uh, like stupid, it's a horrible design and actually uh, doesn't protect uh, as, as well as it could do and it doesn't protect, it's just a stupid design, it's rubbish, I don't know how even they came up with it for lacrosse to be honest. Um, the uh, last couple of things I'll say about this glove is, um, I, one thing I disagree with Ilka on is the Velcro wrist strap. I actually find this is fantastic um, and I have completely dispensed with, you will see, the cords. Uh, one of the earliest things I did when I started getting used to using this glove for Sabre, and I should say I use it on a weekly basis for Sabre and it's stood up very, very well, it's only got some scuffs, no stitchings come undone, no tears, nothing. It stood up very, very well and I find it very, very good for Sabre. Um, but one of the first things I did was dispense with that cord because they're always flapping around, you can't do them up properly if you've got two gloves on, they're just fiddly, they're horrible. And with this um, Velcro section which is padded, which is actually really, really good, because it protects the inside of the wrist, which is pretty important, and the base of the palm there, which you've got quite um, quite a lot of muscle on. And it, I've had I've been hit there once, and um, anything you can do to cover up the base of the palm there is a good thing because when you get hit there, you keep a bruise for quite a long time. Um, but that keeps the glove on really, really well. And because it's Velcro and big, it's really easy to do when you've got all your gear on and your mask or anything else. It's very easy to get on and off. So I'm a big fan of that and I think that should stay regardless of what happens with the rest of the cuff and the wrist. Okay. Um, and the final thing I want to say is just to reiterate that I think these gloves are really freaking good okay there um, even as they are I haven't modified mine at all I have no wrist mobility problems I haven't received any injury through through this um, I, they have stood up you know in terms of quality they've stood up really well they're affordable they're light um, you can wash them uh, there's, you know just I, I don't have any major complaints about these but as Ilka points out we can always make things better and I totally agree and the things that I think we should focus on about making these better are the wrist and cuff and the edges of those fingers. I think if we can get those things right, we're going to have a really, really awesome glove for hopefully still a very affordable amount of, uh, of money, or hopefully the same, the same uh, amount of money. Okay, so there's my sort of updated thoughts on this glove. Um, but I highly recommend people to uh, use them. They're great, especially for one-handed sword. 
uh, fantastic for Sabre and I don't have any mobility or tactile problems with them at all. Cheers!